Hello, and welcome, one and all, to the 2020 Loft Kids Fest at Home Edition. My name is Jeff. I'm the program director here at the Loft Cinema, and it's really, really, really great to see you. It's been a whole year. How have you been? Now, even though we can't get together in the theater this summer, that is not going to stop us from having a literal ton of fun at the Kids Fest this year, which is why we're bringing it into your home, which means you can have a fun time experiencing the Loft Kids Fest this year on your couch with your mom or your dad or your cousin or your brother or your sister or your grandpa or your abuela or your kitty cat or your hamster or your gonzo, but it's all going to be in your house and it's going to be great. We also this year have crafting fun going on as usual and we're going to be showing you how to make fun things using junk that you have lying around your house. So spoiler alert, there are going to be coffee filters involved. So kids, here's hoping that your parents are part of the coffee generation. Ah, that gets me going in the morning. Now, we also have a free daily raffle happening. So all you need to do is go to our website, loftcinema.org, and click on that day's film. And that's where you're going to watch the movie. And you can also fill out the raffle form. And you could win an amazing prize. I don't even know what it is. It's so amazing. Donated by our pals at Bookman's Entertainment Exchange. So you know it's going to be good. We also have a mega exciting treasure hunt going on at the Kids Fest this year. So each day for each film, there's going to be a special clue posted on our webpage for that day's film. So all you need to do is after you watch the film, go to the webpage and look for that clue and then write it down. And on the last day of the Kids Fest, you're going to use all those clues because I know you're going to watch every film every day. You're going to use all those clues to fill in a form and you could win something unbelievable also donated by our friends at bookman's entertainment exchange so you don't even worry about it it's going to be great now the one thing we could not do this year is give out free popcorn which is going to be so sad because popcorn is amazing and free popcorn is even better we have not yet discovered a way to stuff your face with popcorn through a screen yet. But have no fear because I am going to eat all of the popcorn that we would have served at the Kids Fest this year myself. That's my pledge to you kids. So that popcorn shall not go to waste. Oh look here's some right here. I might as well get started right now. It's delicious. Oh, they'll carry it away. Oh. Man, that's good popcorn. Got a little stuck in my teeth. I'll eat that later. Now, I would like to thank our sponsors for this year's Kids Fest, who made it all happen. Our gold program sponsor this year is Long Realty Cares Foundation, so thanks to them for helping to make this possible. Let's not forget to thank our program sponsors, the Pima County Public Library, also Pima Federal Credit Union, and Rusing, Lopez, and Lazardi, attorneys at law, for all your legal needs, kids. And many of our pals from the Kids Fest past are returning to the at-home edition this summer, so I would like to give a big thanks to our pals, Mildred and Dildred Toy Store which is the greatest purveyor of toys and toy-related products in the entire universe, and it's right here in Tucson. Thanks, Mildred and Dildred. They're going to be here to help us do some crafting. I also want to give a huge thank you to two of our wonderful Loft staffers, Shauna and Ben, who have worked very hard to make this Kids Fest this year so wonderful. Thanks, Shauna and Ben. And while we're at it, let's just thank the entire Loft staff, because... Aren't they the coolest? The answer is yes. So, today, 
we are kicking off the Loft Kids Fest 2020 at home edition the way any great party should be kicked off, which is Muppet style. So today we are going to be watching Muppets from Space from 1999. So this is the sixth Muppet film. And if you've ever wondered, where did Gonzo come from? I think we've all wondered that at some point. This is the film that will answer that question. Spoiler alert, it has something to do with outer space. And there's also UFOs involved, and I love UFOs. I don't think of them as unidentified flying objects. I think of them as undeniably fun objects, because who wouldn't want to get into a UFO and fly off into outer space and have an adventure? I know I would. And all of your Muppet pals are here, Kermit, Miss Piggy, Fozzie, Beaker, whom over the years, many people have commented that they think I resemble Beaker. Beep, 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 And I'm totally cool with it. We also have Peppy the Prawn and Animal. So it's gonna be great. Now the Muppets are one of my very favorite things on planet Earth. So I'm very excited that we get to show a Muppet movie here at the Loft Kids Fest this year. So before we watch Muppets from Space, why don't we check in with our pals at Mildred and Dildred Toy Store, specifically Nikki, and let's see what she's up to because she's going to be making some sort of wonderful craft for us today. So let me give her a call. Oh, Nikki! This is Nikki from Mildred and Dildred. You might recognize me from doing the free craft before the show at um, on second Saturdays at the Loft for Loft Junior, or during the summer when we have the Big Kids Film Festival. Well, since we can't do that stuff in person this year, unfortunately, we decided that it would be fun to make all these cool crafting videos for you guys to do at home, which means I can teach you things that I would never be able to teach you if we were in the movie theater. So. Today I'm going to show you how to finger knit, and all you need is yarn and a pair of scissors. Be more prepared than I was. Okay, let's go. Okay, so to finger knit, what you need is some yarn. This is yarn that I have left over from a sweater I made a while ago. And what you're going to do, I mean you don't have to use yarn, you can use whatever you have. Um, start out with a tail that's kind of long and pinch it like this. Then what you're going to do is weave it around your fingers, like that. And then go around your pinky and go over and under, like that. And then we're going to go back again, like this, so that you've got the yarn crossing the front of your finger twice. So you can see if you close your fingers, you've got two loops on every finger. What you're going to do is lift the lower one up over the first one, like this. It's okay to bend your fingers, you know, like this. Okay, then you're going to take your yarn that's still connected to the ball here and keep weaving around your fingers like this. You might want to push those loops down and go back. So that again, you've got two loops on each finger and you're always going to lift the lower one over the upper one and bring it to the back of your finger like that. I'm going to work on this for a while and then I'll come back. Okay, so with the magic of television, poof, this is what it looks like when you flip your hand over after a while. And what you can do is pull on this and it'll become more like, they call it an eye cord. It's knitted all the way around. You did that, that's so cool. Okay, so let's finish it. You're gonna take your loop over your finger and put it on the next one. And do the same thing. You're gonna lift the lower loop over the top loop. And now this one gets moved to the next finger. Lift the lower loop over the top loop. And now this one, lift the lower loop over the top loop. And then get out your scissors, kids, Ask a grown-up for help. Cut the thread and take this tail and put it through the loop. And now 
you've got this cool thing that you can tie into a bigger loop and make it a doggy collar or make a bracelet for yourself or you can make more of these and link them together and make like a crazy chain scarf or whatever you can think of. My friends, stay safe and healthy and wash your hands and keep making cool stuff. Okay, see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, well, somebody is calling on the locked kids fest phone. Who could it be? Hello, this is Jeff. I'm at the Loft Kids Fest 2020 at Home Edition. Who's this? Oh, it's the Children's Museum, our old pals. They have a really great video to show us. Yes? What? Oh boy, okay, that sounds great. This is a video they're calling Shear the Sheep. We're gonna show it, thanks for calling. Okay, let's watch the Children's Museum shear the sheep. Hi, it's Jordan from Children's Museum Tucson. And guess what? There's a sheep behind me. I don't know if you noticed, but there's a sheep behind me. And it's not a real sheep, it's a pretend sheep. It's made out of cardboard and I'm using shaving cream to pretend that it has a big white fluffy coat. And guess what I'm doing with that big white fluffy coat today? I'm shearing it, which means I'm gonna take it off. Did you know, friends, that real farmers have to shear their sheep, especially in the summer months when it's starting to get warm? Hmm, and I mean, when I think about it, it makes sense. Because what's a sheep coat made out of? Wool, and what do we use wool? In. We use wool in yarn and felt and our cold weather gear like scarves, gloves, mittens, socks, hats, because it's such a warm material. So I'd imagine that in the summer it's quite hot for a sheep, which is why they have to be sheared. So friends, without further ado, let me show you how I shear my sheep. Usually we shear with scissors, but I don't need scissors. I'm gonna use cardboard. And all I do is gently scrape my shaving cream or sheep coat off. So friends, if you would like to practice your shearing, you will need permission from an adult, shaving cream, cardboard or thick card stock, and I recommend using a tray or bucket and placing it at the bottom to catch the excess shaving cream. All right, friends, have fun and enjoy your movie. Hi, my name's Adam, and I'm an animal care supervisor at Reed Park Zoo, and I'm here to tell you about our meerkat pups. Uh, they're about two months old now, and they're getting really active and starting to do all the things the adults do. So we're starting to see them uh, do the sentry behavior where they stand up on their hind legs and they look for predators and play wrestling and just really interactive out here. Tunnels are very important for meerkats. Uh, for one, it allows them to hide from predators. Uh, also, being in the hot desert, that allows them to get out of the sun during the day and get to a cooler area. And that's also where they like to have their pups at and have their den, so it helps protect the babies as well. And meerkats are very social animals. In the wild, the groups, usually just the dominant group has the babies, but the entire group helps take care of them. In our mob, we kind of had a special situation where we had two moms, and they both took care of all the pups and nursed them. And in addition to that, dad was a really great dad and was really involved with helping to move the pups when they were early on and protect them. And now he's taking more of a leadership role and he's teaching them how to dig and how to watch for predators and different things like that. So it's a very, very socially dynamic group. One fun fact about meerkats is that even though they look and act similar to prairie dogs and ground squirrels, they're not a rodent. They're actually a carnivore in the mongoose family. The 
Well, thanks for watching and learning about our meerkats. If you'd like to learn more about our zoo, please visit reedparkzoo.org.